بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى الطيب الطاهرين. Today we have the second lecture in the surgical syllabus, uh, obtaining a fine scar. This lecture is presented in uh, College of Medicine, Basel University. I'm Dr. Amr Salman, uh, consultant plastic surgeon, assistant pro. The first thing, uh, the thing that occur after full thickness injury to the dermis is uh, the body is going to repair that wound and form a scar, as we discussed in the wound healing lecture previously. And when the scar develops, it will never disappear. As we said, the, the process of healing of skin is by scar formation and not by regeneration so there will remain a scar on the body of the patient so we need to tell our patient that this scar is is not going to disappear and there is no eraser can erase a scar and uh, there will be a permanent mark on the skin So, what's the job of plastic surgeons? How we can help our patients to get rid of scars? Many people believe that plastic surgeons are able to dis make the scars disappear. There is a lot of things that we can do to these scars, and we can uh, use science in order to make these scars to be inconspicuous and fine line making them not obvious and not bothering the patient. Factors that we use to do so depends on individual's factor, a wound factor, and there is systemic conditions that affect the final appearance of the scar, and by using uh, surgical techniques we can manipulate scars. Regarding the first thing in this lecture, which is the individual factor, we should know the difference between individuals and their responses to scars. Not everybody have the same response to scars. There's some uh, percentage of population produce very bad scars on their body. As you see in these pictures, those are keloid formers and we should avoid them and avoid putting any uh, new scars on their body or avoiding uh, doing any surgery uh, to unnecessary surgery to these patients because they are going to end with very ugly scars. This is an, uh, also example of a keloid uh, occur in the nap of the neck after uh, some skin diseases. The other factor is the skin type. And uh, skin type, and we live in a locality with a high skin type uh, because our population is pigmented and there is high chance to have a pigmented scar in our population. So pigmented scar will be more obvious, more clear and uh, difficult to be uh, unnoticed. While if the skin of the patient is white, uh, pale, dry, it is going to be having more inconspicuous scars. As you see in this lady, there is a big loss of soft, soft tissue on the face that have been removed. And uh, here we have did a flab for her and this is the final results and the scar is not so obvious on her face. The age factor, the third factor in the individual's uh, population is uh, age. There is misunderstanding in our population about scars and age. They think in our society that scars uh, in children are better, betterly healed and 
inconspicuous. But on the contrary, the, the scientific facts uh, says that the scars in the uh, children were going to be red and white and stretched with the growth. And that is logical because these scars are going to be subjected to enormous force of stretching uh, during the one to two year uh, period of healing and that will cause them to be wider and stressed. On the other hand, in the elderly, because there is a lot of imperfections on the face, there is a lot of wrinkles, there is a lot of uh, changes in the quality of the skin, pigmentation in the areas, uh, so it is easy to hide scars on the elderly's face. Regarding the anatomical area, the anatomical area uh, is uh, important regarding scar formation. There is areas in the body that produce very nice, very fine, very inconspicuous scars like lids and genitalia and it's easy to hide scars in this area. But another area in the body is very dangerous. The sternum, the shoulder and the ear lobule is the sites commonly developed keloids and we should avoid doing surgeries to these areas as much as possible. Scar in the hair bearing area is also uh, very noticeable because losing the hair follicles in the hair bearing area will make the scar more obvious and more visible. And in order to hide the scar in the hair bearing areas, we need to preserve the hair follicles and to make in order to make the scar inconspicuous. Regarding the direction of the scar, there is uh, this nice chart showing the relaxed skin tension lines in which uh, represent the future wrinkling of uh, the face in elderly. And these relaxed skin tension lines are very important to be followed while doing surgeries on the face. Each area has its special direction and you can see the changes when you move from an area to other. You can see the glabella have different configurations in each level, and then it, it changes to different configuration in the forehead, in the cheeks, the lines is, is, is parallel to the nasolabial fold, and uh, while in the lip it is uh, perpendicular to the oral commissure. So these relaxing intention lines should be respected and should be followed if we put scars on the face. As we can see in this example, there is a, this patient having a difficult lesion, which is a sebaceous in the mid of the uh, cheek, which is a very difficult area to be to hide the scar in. So we choose the relaxing intention lines and we cut uh, the ellipse and we close. Uh, so our scar is going to be less noticeable in this way. Another thing is the using originally original wrinkles. There is places that the wrinkles are present and we can use them to hide our scars. In this example, in these two pictures, we can see that the first picture of the, this young man on the left side of the slide uh, having very noticeable scars on the forehead. Why these scars are noticeable? In contrast to the lady on the right, which having a very uh, very big trauma to her head, forehead, a lot of soft tissue losses, and the final healing, leaving less conspicuous scar than the boy beside her. 
while there is a big trauma and, and a lot of soft tissue loss and the eyebrow is highly elevated, but the scars is not conspicuous. While in this young man with a simple wound, but the scar is very conspicuous. The cause, the why, is because in this lady, the scars is following the line of the wrinkles. And in this young man, they are perpendicular to the wrinkles and perpendicular to the relaxed contention lines. So these are more conspicuous. Here is the example of how to remove a, a lesion in the orbital area. This is a dermoid have been removed and we choose the pretarsal crease in order to hide our scar. The direction of the scar, the, the, we can choose the junction of aesthetic units in order to hide our scars. This, the face is divided into multiple aesthetic units. An example, the eyes are an aesthetic units. The nose is an aesthetic unit. The lips and the mouth is an aesthetic unit. And the cheeks are aesthetic units. These, the junction between these units is a very good place to put and to hide scarring. The best example is the nasolabial fold, which is the junction between the lip, upper lip, and the cheek. And this, and this, this middle age uh, man who got a scar in the, in his uh, left nasal labia fold. Uh, this scar is inconspicuous and very, very well hidden, uh, and it is not bothering him. On the contrast, this, uh, the child having a scar in the mid of the nose. And this is a very bad place to have a scar in because it is visible, it is difficult to be hidden, and it is disfiguring for The shape of the wound is important also in to, for hiding scars. If we have a trapdoor deformity or a curvilinear scar, or a crescent scar like these, uh, this will cause problem to our patients. So we should not do that in purpose on our patients. And if it is occurred by trauma or by any uh, other causes, we should, uh, it is going to need surgical correction. As you see here, the problem uh, of this curvilinear scars is the elevation in the center of the uh, scar area. And that comes from a very uh, simple principle that, have, that we have discussed in the previous lecture of wound healing. Uh, uh, we discussed uh, the concept of a scar contraction. By the effect of the myofibroblast, the scar length is going to be reduced approximately by 10% and that will lead to uh, changes in the uh, function of the area as we said of the joints if it cross a joint it's going to cause limitation of movement of the joints and if it uh, occur in this kind of scars in the curvilinear scars it's going to to reduce the size of the scar and make the central area of the Wound bulge upward, giving this beaten uh, appearance, trapdoor deformity. There are systemic factors that affect the scar, vascular diseases, congenital disorders like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which affect the skin healing and make it a paper-like uh, kind of scar. Nutritional status and vitamin deficiencies as important. Regarding management of scars, uh, the first thing that we should do for closing any wound uh, is to concentrate up on the way of suturing of wounds. Because the principle of suturing wounds in a good way will reduce the uh, chance of abnormal scarring, reduce the 
appearance of the scarring and pr pr may uh, give us a very good looking scar. So, as we said in the previous lecture of wound healing, we have a tensile strength, and this tensile strength is increasing gradually but slowly. In three weeks' time, we have 20% of this tensile strength, and this time it is long to leave stitches uh, on the skin. We need to remove them before this line time. And the tensile strength in this uh, area time is low. So how we can balance between the tensile strength, which is not sufficient to hold, and that we need to remove the stitches early because they produce def deformities on the body and uh, they, give, they give stitch marks which are ugly and unacceptable. So, so we, we, we need to, to do, do a balance in this situation. The, and the solution of that is by the, the way we close our wounds. The simple solution for that problem is by putting a deep dermal stitches which is uh, going to stay deep in the dermis, hidden down, not visible externally, and it's going to hold the dermis for long durations, for months after injury, which makes the give the wound time to heal uh, properly. These deep dermal stitches is the key of proper wound closure. Above these dermal stitches, we can close in subcuticular form. And we can produce, hold the wound with tapes in order to keep the epidermis in place. But the key uh, closure is by deep dermal stitches, which can avoid any external uh, stitching that needs to be to stay for a long time. We, if we have, if we put deep dermal stitches, we can remove the external stitches within within three to five days only, because they we don't need them to hold the wound. They are only for approximation of the epidermis, and the revitalization process will end after two days, maximum in such wounds. And uh, by this way, we can protect the tensile strength, which is increasing gradually uh, during the next few months uh, to a level that can uh, hold the wound safe without any problems. Tension oil closure is important in the surgical technique. We need to have a normal tension in order to have less visible scar. More tension mean, means more stretching and more widening and more visibility of the scar. The age of surgery. If we, if we close our wounds flat, that means that they are going to develop depression uh, with time. Why? As we discussed in the wound healing lecture, because of the effect of myofibroblasts that going to reduce the dimensions of the wound. They will reduce the length, reduce the width, and reduce the height. So uh, flat wounds will end with depression. But aversion of the ages of the wound during closure, if we put them upward slightly, that will allow the wound to flatten with time and produce a flat, acceptable scar. Using fine instruments, using a gentle technique, not damaging the tissue, respecting the tissue, that is important surgical principle in closing wounds. And avoid skin infection, and the proper removal of the stitches is also important because if we leave the stitches for a long time it's going to leave stitch marks which is very ugly and unacceptable so if we do use deep dermal stitches we can remove the external stitches uh, after three to five days because we don't need them more than that in the face as revitalization is fast and healing will uh, proceed gently in the body, we need seven days. In joint areas, because there is stretching on the wound and there is uh, shearing forces, we need sometimes two weeks to remove the external stitches. 
regarding how we can manipulate the scar. If the patient develops a scar, it is an unacceptable scar, ugly scar, they don't want that scar, there is a lot of ways to manipulate scars. First thing is medical manipulation. Silicone material is very important in this topic. We use silicone gels, silicone sheets, uh, silicone ointments in order to um, reduce the uh, height of the scar, uh, treating keloid and hypertrophic scars, and to improve the final shape of surgical scars. Steroids is also very important. Topical application of steroid ointments or injecting intralesional uh, long acting steroids like transcellular acetate or kinacort A is also uh, affected. The pressure, the third factor is the pressure, also very nice in producing flattening of our scars. We can use also lasers, CO2 laser, fractional CO2 laser is important in remodeling and changing the shape of the scars. And the surgical way, there is a lot of surgical ways to play with the scars. Simple scar revision by excision the scar and re suturing it. If there is errors in the suturing, we can do that. We can apply z plasties in order to move the di direction of the scar from improper direction, as we see in the previous photos, into more uh, suitable direction, following the relaxed skin, skin, skin tension lines or hid, hiding the scars and wrinkles. W plasty also is useful to cut the continuity of the scar and produce a breakage in the line of the scar making it less uh, conspicuous. This is an example of how we manipulate scars. We, this young man have a T-shaped uh, scar on his cheek, uh, excised most of it by an elliptical excision parallel to the nasolabial form and uh, following the relaxed skin tension lines and the final appearance of the scar which is more uh, acceptable, less noticeable on his face. Final reminder, please, that no laser can erase the scar.